Our God is good. I was telling them something this morning about understanding the place of worship. I, th I think I, I took 15 minutes to talk to them about it. Um, it will not be fair for me not to share it with you. Amen. I, I, I think something happened when we were worshiping this morning. And i um, forgotten what song they sang. It's something about, I think, Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. Oh, I love that song. And then we began to pray and just began to worship. And, and the Holy Spirit took over in this place. And that, that was amazing. And people began to pray in, in tongues and everything. I like that. You know, that is, how, that is how worship should be. It's learning to step into his presence. And I told them this morning that worship for me changed when uh, a long time ago I was, I was in a church. And... You know, my eyes were closed, and then I opened it, and it's like I, I saw a, a corpse in front of me. Yeah, it's just, and I'm used to having open visions. Um, I have those a lot. And so there was this corpse in front of me, and, and, and this person was dressed, and the hands was folded down. And when I saw that, I, I heard in my spirit, there is no praise in the grave. That was what transformed worship for me. I used to be that person that is so stiff during worship. So stiff. Until I realized that worship was not about me but about him. And I told them this, in this, this morning that I wish this church, and that's my, 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 my desire, and I know that the Lord will give me the desires of my heart. Amen. My desire will be that this church, this church will be known as a church that worships. Not just a praying church, but a worshiping church. That you truly understand the place of worship. Where you worship God with, with, with careless abandon, not, not even minding who is standing or sitting close to you. There is no praise in the grave. No one worships in the grave. Now, why did I get that vision? I cannot be still in life and be still in death. If worship, the worship of God cannot move you, you don't have an encounter with God yet. You are playing church. You know I say it as I, as I see it. Amen. I'm not afraid of anyone. <laughs> if you want to fight me, I bet there are some people that will stand up and fight you too. So I will say it. You cannot have a true encounter with God. And not marvel at the presence of God. You cannot have a true encounter with God and not be in awe at the mention of his name. That your whole being doesn't shake. Even the foundations of the very earth you are standing on quakes when God steps in. How much more you who is created to show forth his praise. Become stiff. Ah. So when I get to heaven, I will worship. No, you are missing the point. Why will you worship in heaven? Because his throne is there, because his presence is there? You're missing something. Jesus said, I and my father will what? Abide in here. Don't wait to get there. He is here with you. <laughs> and so when you understand that he is here with me, you worship. Hallelujah. That is sermon number one. Worship is about who he is. Has nothing to do with you. Enter into his presence with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. You will enter into forgetting and forsaking all. Enter to worship God for who he is. Amen. David was dancing, even as a king, before the Ark of the Covenant, before the presence of God. Now, I'll tell you something. 
To others, it was, a, it was a box. To David, it was the presence of God himself. Forgetting his title, forgetting his status, he danced. And his wife mocked him. And David said this. I danced before the God who made me king in place of your father. You worship because of the understanding that you have. He had this understanding. That God brought me from nowhere and placed me somewhere. For some of you who want to worship when you get to where you want to get to. You should worship because you are where you are. Because he brought you from somewhere. And so I told myself my hands will not be like this. My hands will always be like this. Because when I'm dead, I don't know who's going to put my hands down like this. That's fine. I've, I've used it only anyways. I've, I've already, it has served its purpose. Glory to God. You can fold it however you want to fold it. I'm gone already. Don't worry. But you have to consciously decide within yourself that you will worship God. Sometimes in time of worship, you don't need any man to, to lay hands on you. Things happen. Things happen. I'm telling you this. Things happen in the time of worship. Things happen. I taught us here about the six group of people that, that, that attract heaven's attention. That the father seeks after. The first group, what? True worshipers. True worshipers. The moment you begin to worship, you don't look for God. God looks for you. So th these are kingdom principles that we need to understand. God, and when God steps in, he comes with everything. That's why healing happens during worship. Because God just showed up. You come with a heavy heart and you choose not to worship and then you go back the same way. Why, why did you come? <laughs> you came to the one who was able to take the burden away and you... <laughs> I told you I'll be a little laid back today, huh? Have we collected the offerings? And I can say what I want to say. Glory to God. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Glory to God. Amen. And so the house of God should be a house of joy because his presence dwells there. In his presence, the Bible says there is fullness of joy. You cannot come here with a heavy heart and live with the same. Come on now. You are not doing something right. Experience God. Experience Him. Experience Him. There's power in worship. Amen. David was a great man, a man after God's own heart. Why? He understood the place of worship. The Bible said he invented instruments that were not in existence at that time. Just to worship God. New sounds, hymns. It's never written before. God loved it. God made a vow. Your seed, your throne will be established forever. Why is Jesus from the tribe of Judah? Judah means praise. Why did praise endure forever? God loves it. God loves it. Amen. So that's sermon number two. We're going to go to sermon number three. Amen. Genesis 21, 1 to 2. Let's go. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 to 2. Father, give me strength today to speak. I feel like I'm so worn out, honey. Do you want to, do you want to finish this message? No? You know, I, I, I told myself... Um, it's easy to run two services because I just preached the same service twice. That's the right, same sermon twice. But it's not true. It's not the same sermon. Now, it's the same sermon, but it's not the same sermon. 
So for those who attend two services, you notice that the two different. I, I used to think that the second service for me is easier because I flow. It's just me. First service, I have a translator. I get, but now it's like the first service, I flow better. And, you know, some, some, someone is pulling in the morning. Amen. Genesis 21, 1 to 2. I'm going to be speaking on something I've titled, His Untimely Timeliness. Amen. Glory to God. Now, for those of you who are English majors, you are on your own. Say, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense to me. That's all that matters. Amen. His untimely timeliness. Glory to God. Uh, I'm going to be talking about time this morning. And I believe that this message is for someone now. Genesis 21, 1 to 2. The Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time of which God has spoken to him. At the set time, at the appointed time. It sounded like it was late. Now, this was a promise that was made 25 years before now. And Abraham was, was 75 when God made all those good promises to him. But it didn't happen until... He was 100 years old. Say, yes, I've heard this before. That's good. And I want you to hear it again. Now, if you notice, when you go back to Genesis, Genesis 1, verse 3, to be specific, the Bible said, and God said, let there be light. In other words, it was his first institution of time. Let there be light. And God created light. The greater light to govern the day. In other words, I want to read that. Somebody, Genesis 1, 3, help me. Let me read the Bible. Feels good to read the Bible sometimes. Genesis 1, 3. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4, and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. God called, verse 5, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. And so we see God. Creating time, instituting time before God began the creation of other things. In other words, time was first created before God began to create other things. Before God created the animals, before God created the beasts of the field, the, the birds of the air, the fish of the, of, of the sea, and even before God created you and I. So time was appointed before man was created. And so God standing here in front of him is time, and then after that, seven days later or six days later, man gets created. And I told them this morning that God sees man, God walks with man through the appointment of time. And so time was created before man was created. Amen. But the problem is that some of us, instead of seeing God, we want to see God through Time, forgetting that the one who created time is greater than time. The one who created time is outside of time. And the created cannot be in charge or cannot dominate the creator. The creator is greater than the created. But we want to subject God to time. No, God created time. Amen. And so we are not to see God through time, but we are to see God through his word because he exists outside of time. And then the Bible says that it was the set time. It was the appointed time. And Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 tells us this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. If you will turn with me to Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. It says to everything there is a season, a time for everything purpose under the sun, under the heaven. In other words, a time has been appointed, a time has been set, a time has been ordained for every purpose under heaven. And when the time was created before man, and so God assigns time. God assigns time. God appoints time. God sets time to every purpose under heaven. It doesn't matter how noble it seems. It doesn't matter how urgent it seems. The Bible says, for he has set time to every purpose under heaven. 
There's a time to everything. It's a time to everything. But we cannot see God through the lens of time. Because time did not create God. God created time. And God exists outside of time. And we cannot judge God based on time. For he is superior to time. And he is God. He is God. Jeremiah uh, 32 verse 27. Jeremiah 32 verse 27. He says something. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. That is who I am. uh, Revelations 1.8, I am the Alpha, the beginning. Time is not the beginning. I am the beginning. I created time. It's me. Me. And so I've appointed time. Now to you it may seem that I'm late. But there is a set time. There is a set time to every purpose. If I want to get married, it has to be today. There is a set time to your marriage. Is it a purpose? Yes, it's a set time to it. I want to have children. There's a set time to it. Oh, I want my promotion. There's a set time to it. And the thing is that we cannot tell God what time to do it. Hallelujah. He appoints a time to it. And even though we think that he is late, whose time are you judging God by? Yours. Or his. Yours. Or his. If he's late. Is he late based on your time. Or his time. Because in his time. He is always over time. And the one who is over time. Who is above time. Is greater than time. And can never be late based on time. He's above it. He's over it. And he watches over time. So he cannot be late. Cannot be late. So there's a set time. There is an appointed time. What was the set time for Abraham? Yes, the promise was made at age 75. But the set time was at age 100. Now some of us run ahead of time. And many miss it because they work based on their time and not based on God's appointed time. Most of us jump out prematurely. Every child that leaves the womb prematurely takes the grace of God to survive. No matter how noble that venture is, the moment it goes prematurely, it takes a function of time. It takes the mercy of God. Moses almost missed it. Why? He launched himself 40 years before the appointed time. At the fullness of time, the Bible said, God. What happened? God showed up at the burning bush. Moses. It was the right time. 40 years he thought it was time. And he killed an Egyptian. <laughs> they gave him a label, murderer. <laughs> The moment you jump ahead of God, you take upon yourself a label that God has not given you. Amen. And so for Abraham, the appointed time was 100 years old. It would have been better if it happened at age 60. It would have been better. It would have been better if Sarah got pregnant at age 25. Sounds better. It would have been better. What about age 18? It would have been better. Why did God allow them to go through that ridicule? Why did God allow them to go through that shame? Why did God allow them to go through that pain? It was not the appointed time. Oh, how man wants to go through things without stress. I love it when my former pastor says, it is, life is not Burger King. You cannot have it your way. His daughter is here. He went to Africa with me. He forgot Africa is not Burger King. 
you cannot have it your way. And so every time he's in Africa, he said, I want, I want hamburger. I want, I want, uh, um, um, tell me. Um, no, no. The yellow, the yellow stuff. Mustard. <laughs> and then I said, Pastor, there's no mustard in Africa. What is it? <laughs> I, I was going to remind him, this is no Burger King. <laughs> My God. <laughs> and then when we found out, he said he didn't like goat meat. You know, years, you know, months later, we're like, he, he said to me, I bet that was goat meat they were putting in that burger, right? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you were eating? <laughs> Glory to God. Don't tell that, okay? So for Abraham, it was 100 years. For Lazarus, the appointed time was four days after he had died. That after his case had been settled, after he had been buried, after he was forgotten, his case was sealed, but his appointed time was still four days ahead. That your God is never late. To man, that case is settled. The Bible says in the book of Mark, it says to man it is impossible but not with God. For with him all things are possible. With him he is on time. And four days later, four days later, he shows up. Why? I've got an appointment with Lazarus. Are you kidding me? He died four days ago. You are God. Don't you know how to keep appointments? I'm on time. I'm on time. But, but he died four days ago. I am on time. The Bible said he got to the tomb. He said, roll away the stone. John eleven thirty nine. 39. John eleven thirty nine. 39. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time, this time, according to whose time? Man's time. <laughs> You look at God through time. And so Martha said, by this time, God is saying, whose time? Whose time? Not my time. Say, by this time, he stinks. Really? Your time? Not my time. Watch. <laughs> He's about to speak with me now. By this time, he stinks. What did Jesus say? She continued, she said, for... He has been dead four days by this time. This time. And so that's where we miss it. This time. Whose time? Your time or God's time? Because to man's time, he stinks. To man's time, the situation is done. It's over. That's it. That's it. I'm dead. I'm gone. That's it. I'm finished. This time. But whose time? Jesus says, roll away the stone. Because based on God's time, he's got an appointment. Based on God's time, he's got a destiny to fulfill. Based on God's time, he has an assignment that he's still owing heaven. Based on God's time, he has lives he has yet to touch. Based on God's time. He said, this time. Sometimes you don't Allow people to tell you what time it is. Martha was speaking on the behalf of Lazarus. This time, you're done. Okay, I didn't say this in first service. Amen. So the second service, you're getting something new. Don't let people tell you what time it is. They say, oh, you are too old. Your time for marriage is gone. Whose time? You are too old. You can't have children. Whose time? Tell them what God's time is. Oh, I wish somebody would catch that. God's time. God's time. So based on God's time, he had an appointment four days later. For Anna, the time it was after the shaming. It was after the ridicule. It was after all the name callings. They called her barren. That was the time. And God showed up for Samuel chapter 1 verse 20. For Samuel 1 20, the Bible says, so it came to pass in the process of time, at the fullness of 
time, at the appointed time, it came to pass. It will always come to pass at his appointed time. It will always come to pass. The Bible says, though it tarries, it shall come to pass at the appointed time. The Bible says, and it came to pass. It came to pass. To man he is late, but to God ooh, he is on time. He is on time. It would have been better if it happened before the shaming. Where was God when they were calling me those names? He was watching. Where was God when they mocked me? He was there. He never left you. But there was an appointed time. There was an appointed time. So the Bible says, and it came to pass in the process of time that Anna conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. But this was not the first time she has been asking. The Bible said that year after year she appeared before the Lord at Shiloh, at Shiloh year after year. And now she says, Because I asked from the Lord. So has she not been asking all these years? She has been. She has been. But something she never did. She never gave up. For at the appointed time, he answered. God will always answer at the appointed time. For the three Hebrew boys, the three Hebrew boys, the appointed time was just after they were thrown into that fire, into the furnace. That was they didn't make sense. But why didn't God show up just before the king called them? Why didn't God show up when the king called them? Why didn't God show up before they bound their feet and their hands and everything? Why didn't God show up? Why didn't God stop it? Why are we looking at God through the lens of time? God exists outside of time. You look in time, you would not see him. He is not there. Why didn't he show up? The king said, Throw them in. And they did. They did. They did. And the fire was so hot that even the ones that threw them in got burnt. They got consumed by some fire. And the Bible says immediately the king stood up. He said, did we not throw three in there? How come I see four loose walking around? Because God showed up at the appointed time. Go to Isaiah 43. It's not in my note, but I want to read it. Isaiah 43, 1 to 5. I want us to read it. Isaiah 43, 1 to 5. Father, help me. Is that the right one? Somebody, somebody read the first verse for me. What's the first thing there? It says, I am the Lord. Hold on. But now, thus says the Lord, your creator, O, your creator, o Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you, come, when you pass through the waters, it will, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as a ransom, Cush and Seba in your place. Since you are precious in my sight, since you have honored and I, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other people in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offsprings from the east and gather you from the west. Amen. Not in my note, but I, I thought we should throw that in there. And God takes his time introducing himself to you. I am your God. I created you. In case you don't know who I am, I made you. I am your God. You are honored. You are loved. You are precious to me. I will not leave you. You go through the fire. Guess what? It's not going to burn you. I will always be there. I'll be on time. You go through that water. You know, I, I, I told them this one day. Now, you can look at fire and water as two different classes of, of problems that we go through in life. Now, let's look at fire. For the, you know, the, uh, Let's take fire. Fire is very quick. It consumes really fast. 
Sometimes calamity fall on people. And you ask yourself, where did this come from? It was just like that. The entire family gone. Just like that. Just like that. You were there. Living life. Over here. And all of a sudden, just like fire, consumes everything in this path. And then you have water. Now that's the one I love the most. Because that's the one that really tests our faith. And so when water seeps into our lives, it comes in gradually. And those are the, the gradual problems that come in. And when you look at it, it is ankle high. I can take care of this. Oh, just a little thing. But you know water, it keeps rising. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I can take it. This is little, I can take care of it. And then before you know it, it gets to your knee. And you still think you're in control. You know, you have problems like that. Just when you think you can take care of it. Before you know it, it gets to your waist level. And before you know it, it's just there by your chest. And you're beginning to scream. And now it's at your neck. God, I thought I could take care of this. But God says, no matter which one it is, I am there with you. At the appointed time. You know, Jesus would have put Peter out of the water. Just as he began to sink. Oh, you know, better still, he would have told Peter, don't even bother to walk on water because I know you will sink, so stay there. But he cried out, and at the appointed time, he grabbed and reached. Listen, God will do what he said he will do at the appointed time. At the appointed time. He showed up at the appointed time, at the fire, because according to his word, when you go through fire, he didn't, didn't say when you go over fire. He didn't say when you go around fire. He said when you go what? Through fire. Are you going to go through fire? According to the word of God. Yes, you will. Glory to God. But thank God that he is there with us. For Daniel, the appointed time was just after he was thrown into the den. The lion's den. But why didn't God stop him? It's not the appointed time. For some of us, we have to be thrown in there. We have to be thrown into those situations where we are completely helpless. We get, to thro get thrown into that situation where everyone abandons us. Even the one who was rooting for him, the king was helpless. You get to that point where the person you always run to, you call this person, and the person says, I don't know how to help you anymore. You get to that point. The next morning, the king comes, oh, Daniel, did your God, who you worship, save you? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm just chilling down here. Amen. We need to walk on the AC anyways, but I'm still here. At the appointed time, God will always show up. God will always show up. Sometimes we get uneasy. Sometimes we get a little hasty. Sometimes we want things to be done now, urgently, because we think we're losing control. We think we're losing everything. And sometimes we'll become frustrated. Sometimes we'll become angry with God. You know, I've met people that said, I am just so angry with God. I said, really, how is that working for you? <laughs> sometimes we get to a point where we get offended. Get to that point. John the Baptist, you know, Jesus said, of all born of a woman, there's none greater than John. But John got to a point in his life, in his ministry, after he got jailed, he became offended. He became frustrated. And he, he sent his disciples to Jesus. Are you the one we're expecting? Or should we expect another? How come you are not manifested? We want this a little quicker. Come on, do something. Move. You know what Jesus said? He sends the disciples back to him. He 
And he says to John, he said, blessed is he who is not offended by me. That God does not want us to be offended with him. Don't get offended. Matthew 11 verse 6. So then blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Why will you get offended? Because you keep looking at God through the lens of time. And God says, stay with me. Be patient. Don't get frustrated. Don't get offended. You see, it is the man who is not offended that is blessed. It is the man who does not take offense that is blessed. Blessed is, blessed is he who is not offended. But Pastor Tuesday, it is hard. How do I sit down and watch my loved ones being ravaged by sickness and I'm praying every day? It is hard. I'm human. That's true. It is hard. I know I'm losing that job. It is hard. How do I feed my family? How come God is not stepping in? How come he's not showing up? And you're telling me not to get offended. You're telling me not to get anxious. Or the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. How is that possible? It is. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have told us. He said, but help me. How do I do this? I'll help you. Number one, this is how you do it. It's how you do it. Number one, judge God faithful. Judge him faithful. When you get offended, when you get to that point where you're about to lose it, and you're about to send God a letter, you're about to send him an email. You know how, what those, those nasty emails you want to send God? <clears throat> you get to that point. This is what you do. Sit down. Sit on your judgment throne. Sit down there. Be the judge. I want you to be the judge. That's good. I'm not telling you something that God hasn't said. The Bible says, do you know you're going to judge angels? So you are a judge. Sit down. Judge God. Judge him. But this is what a judge does, though, before you pass judgment. This is what a judge does. A judge examines all the evidence put before him. So I want to help you here now. Before you pass judgment, before a judge proclaims or pronounces a sentence, he or she examines every evidence exhibits put before him or her. So do it. Do it. The Bible says concerning Abraham. The Bible said that Abraham judged God faithful. In other words, Abraham, he examined all the evidence and he passed judgment. And he said, faithful. That was his judgment. How did he come to that conclusion? He looked at the evidence. Where God brought him from. How God brought him out. How God blessed him. God did everything he said he was going to do. The Bible says all his words, not one of his good promises failed. They all came to pass. Judge God. Judge him. <laughs> Judge him. And so he stood. God told him, I'm going to bless you. And the Bible says and Abraham became exceedingly rich and prosperous. God did that. And he examined everything. And so you need to sit down. You need to sit down and you need to look at your life. You need to examine the evidence. Look at where he brought you from. Look at everything he has done in your life. Look at the many times he stood up and he saved you. And then passed judgment. And declare faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. For he is not a man. He cannot lie. Pass judgment on God. Feel free. Or declare him faithful. 
Oh, indeed he is. Revelations chapter 19, verse 11. Revelations 19, verse 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and his side, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His name was called faithful and true. His name is faithful. His nature is faithful. His personality is faithful. God cannot change. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. So get your eyes out of, out of time and focus on him. For I will set my eyes onto the hills from where is coming my help. Your help does not come from time. Your help comes from above. The one who made the heavens and the earth and he is faithful. If he says it, he will do it. At the set time. The appointed time. The appointed time. For every purpose under heaven. A set time. A set time. No wonder he created time before he made man. Hallelujah. Judge him faithful. His character, his personality is faithful. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. 2 Timothy 2 13. It says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. He remains faithful. He remains faithful. Did he say he's going to save your children? Guess what? He's going to do it. Did he say he's going to bless your bread and water? Guess what? He will do it. Did he say he's going to heal you? Hey, he will do it. He will do it. He cannot change. He cannot deny himself. He remains faithful. Forever he is faithful. For all eternity he is faithful. And you know, I love this. Psalm 89 verse 35. Psalm 89 verse 35. This is God speaking concerning David. He said, once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. I want you to take, t just take David out of there and put your name there. And this is God speaking to you right now, this morning. That he has sworn by his holiness. He says, I will not lie to David. I will not lie to Jennifer. I will not lie to Jessica. I will not lie to John. I will not lie to you. His name. Is faithful and true. For there is no lie in him. It's none. Oh. He exists outside of time. Don't look at God through the lens of time. Amen. So number one, judge him. Sit down, judge God. Examine the evidence, judge him. Declare your judgment. But I tell you, you come out with one conclusion. Faithful. Number two, wait for him. Wait for him. For the vision, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, is for an appointed time. That miracle is for an appointed time. So don't we tarry, it shall come to pass. <laughs> it shall come to pass. Wait for him. No, John the Baptist sent, sent people to Jesus. Say, hey, are you the one? Or should we get to the wheel? Should we expect somebody else? I told them this morning. When, when, when the disciples came to Jesus, Jesus didn't go, oops, I got to hurry up. Nah, he didn't do that. You know, some of you, you think when you complain, I tell them, some of us have perfected complaining. We have PhDs and ZHDs and complaints. We murmur and grumble. And so you will think Jesus will go, oops, let's hurry up. I have a word to save. Let's go. But he's got a schedule. He sent a message back to him. 
Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. I have a schedule to keep. I have a time. Well, somebody said, well, well, Jesus, at the wedding at, at, at Cana, his mother sent people to him. Now, that came to me while we were worshiping. See, wonderful things happen when you worship. Amen. You get sermons, huh? So, sermon number four. In sermon number three. <laughs> Amen. Because I was sitting down there and I was going through my, my spirit. I said, Jesus, you had a schedule, so nobody can change your time, your schedule, your timetable. But your mother did. Because at the wedding in Cana, the Bible said that they had no wine, they ran out of wine. Follow me here. Ah. And so, they came to the mother of Jesus and they said, we'll have no wine. He said, go to my son. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Right? So they went to Jesus. And Jesus says to, them, says to the mother, woman, what is your problem? Send him to get away. Amen. <laughs> woman, now, now in, in the biblical way, he said, what have I to do with you? Amen. But in the ghetto language, he said, what is your problem, woman? My time is not yet come. Amen. What did Mary say? Mary said, do whatever he asked you to do. Now, this is what happened. That's what I was asking the spirit right there when I was sitting down there. When I was standing during worship. I said, but Jesus was forced to do something after that, that was not uh, 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 in his time. Amen. You know what the spirit told me? He said, what did Jesus do? He only turned water to wine. If it was his time, he wouldn't have given them just wine. Somebody didn't catch it. <laughs> I was standing here with the Lord told me that. All he did was give them wine. It was not the appointed time. Some of you, you force God. You fall under mercy instead of under grace. Sermon number four, we'll talk about that later. It's right there. All they got was wine. I don't know about you. I need more than wine from him. Um, wait on God. Wait on God. Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wi uh, with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on God. Wait on him. Wait on him with his word. Study the word of God. Wait on him in worship. Wait on him in the fast. Wait on God in prayer. Wait on God. There is an appointed time. Ask yourself this. The Bible says for everything, every purpose. Are you a thing? Are you a purpose under heaven? Yes, there is a set time for you. There is a set time for you. Number three, trust in God. Trust in his timing. Trust that he's got a plan for you. Trust that his will is perfect. The blessing of God, the Bible says, make it one rich. And with it, he adds no sorrow. Trust God's perfect timing. Number four, believe God. Believe him. Believe God. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Luke 1 45. Say blessed is she who believed. Blessed is he who believed. For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Blessed is she who believed. Believe God. But there will be a fulfillment. It shall come to pass. It will come to pass. There will be a manifestation. Believe God. He will do it at his sign. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, he has made everything beautiful in its time. God beautifies all things. You know, I 
after Anna gave birth, there was no more mention of those who mocked her. As a matter of fact, after Sarah had Isaac, now you know what Isaac is? It means laughter. God's laughter wipes away years of weeping. Just wait. Wait. All the pain you think you've suffered, it just takes one second of right timing. One second. One second. And every pain, every shame gets wiped away. His untimely timeliness. To us is untimely. Oh, but to him he is on time. He is on time. And he makes all things beautiful at its own time. It only becomes beautiful at its appointed time. It only becomes precious when it's in its appointed time. The testimony becomes sweet at its appointed time. You know what? Some people come to you and say, I just made money. Say, so how did you make it? And they tell you, uh, okay. Why are you not excited? Yeah. Ah, it's a good thing. But, uh, eh, you know. At God's time, Heaven rejoices with you. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 3.15 That which has already been and what is to be has already been. Now I underline that. I love this. Now brothers and sisters, I have read the book of Ecclesiastes a lot. I tell you something. But then I was looking at verse 15 again. And I was like, huh. You know, when you get one of those words that just jump out on you. And I, want, I want to leave you with this. It says, that, uh, if you need to underline this in your Bible, please do. I want you to take note of this. It says, that which is has already been. Take note. That which is has already been. He said, and what is to be has already been. That which you are waiting for, God has already done. Just wait for the manifestation. That's all. That's all. But when Daniel was praying for 21 days, he waited. He would have given up hope. He would have stopped praying at day 10. Now, I know some of us who will stop praying at day 3. Some of us, when we get to day 2, glory to God. But this man pushed, kept pushing day 21. Now, do you know the funny thing? The day... He started praying was the day his answer was released. Now let's go back again. And what is to be has already what? Been. But he kept pushing until he saw the manifestation. And what is to be has already been. Already done. Already done. So what do you do? You begin to walk by faith. You speak those things that be not as though they were. Why? Because what is to be has already what? Been. Is it making sense to you now? <laughs> Rise to your feet with me. Lessons. This is Pastor Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. And I want to specially invite you to fellowship with us at Trinity Rhema Church, located here in Midland, Texas. I welcome you to visit our website to see more life-transforming sermons. And feel free to contact us if you have any questions or need prayers. God bless you.